Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning a bunch of building tips for the new stone from the Ashlands, Grosten. I also apologize for my constant mispronunciations. I do have, I guess it's called, an accent. Grosten has been getting a lot of heat online, but in this video I'm going to make the argument that it's actually a really cool thing to build with. I won't cover how you get it or anything like that in this video, you'll have to watch something else to find that out. Here, I'm just going to talk to you about different ways that you can build with Grosten, ways that you can use it and make it look visually appealing. The major complaint with this stuff is how blocky it looks. And it's true, if you do use individual pieces of Grosten alone, they do look very blocky. I mean, they're perfectly cut, chiseled stone, you know? And I can see how they can seem a bit out of place and flat. Boring, right? But here's the thing, you're, you're not supposed to just do this. The magic of Grouston comes from snapping the pieces together in combinations. A really simple way to do this is whenever you place a wall, always trim it up with these stone pillar pieces. Don't just ignore the pillars, they're really important for the finished look of the Grouston. You can see the difference it makes adding these into the edges here, compared to just having the big chunk right there. And we have the same kind of problem here, we can see that chunky platform, right? Well, all we have to do is just add these edges into it, and then just by adding these pillars into the pre-existing snap points, you can see how much more finished it looks. It really adds that element of awesomeness. But it's not just for how it looks. Grosten is also genuinely useful for laying flooring. From time to time in the Ashlands, you'll come across these huge cathedral-like ruins. They show up both at sea, like this one, and then we have the inland locations like this, which are more common. Either way, inside the ruins, you will find a perfect situation to use the Grosten floors. These things are huge, and they're the fastest way to set up a floor. There's no other stone piece that's this wide and far across. Cross. This allows us to floor big rooms really quickly without having to build a bunch of pieces. And personally, the Grosten floor is one of my favorite build pieces now. It's so useful. These ruins are perfect places to set up the floors, because you can clip them into the sides of the ruin itself, which will give it stability, and then you can keep them going to give the floor back to the ruin, sort of restoring the cathedral. Upstairs here, we can see a much better example of that, where the floor covers the entire structure. The next thing that players often trip up about with Grouston is the roofing situation. Unlike the other roofs that have corner pieces, you see, with Grouston, we don't have a full corner piece like we do with the other roofs. We have these sort of arched half corner pieces here. And with the Grosten, this is really what they're expecting you to do for the roofs. But for now, I want to give you a simpler option for roofs using Grosten. We're going to start with this basic floor piece and just make a basic cube. When you're using Grosten, consider the fact that the pieces with holes in them are cheaper and more cost effective. The most cost effective wall is actually this piece here. It's the go-to thing that's cheaper than everything else, and is good to use unless you have a reason not to. And the Grouston stairs are just like all the other stairs that you're used to, except they're better. Just a different color, really. And here's where we sort of run into that problem that people encounter. It just looks so blockish and square, right? But remember what I said earlier, you shouldn't ever place these pieces without the pillars. You see how just adding these pillars really helped to jazz up the look of this building. I don't know about you, but with the pillars, it doesn't look too simple. I think it looks awesome. But I told you that I'm going to simplify roofs for you, so let's get to it. There we go. We've just extended everything up one more floor, so we have some breathing space for the character. And now, instead of using the regular roofs, we're just going to use this stone floor piece. It's going to give it a more blocky look. You might think that you have to use roofs, but stone pieces, even stone floors, actually function as roofs. You see how that shelter icon is showing up? All I have to do is pop down a campfire and I start getting the resting bonus, showing that you can get shelter in these cube-like rooms. And obviously you could expand this a lot, you could make it much taller, but I'm gonna finish it off visually, because no Ashlands building is really complete unless it looks like a cathedral or a temple. You're gonna be seeing a lot of these arches. 
This becomes a recurring theme in what gives an Ashland build its sort of look. The arches come in two sizes. There's the small arch, as seen, and then there's the medium arch, or big. I, I call it the big arch. It doesn't look medium to me. In general, using these arches is going to be how you can give a finished look or add some more depth to it. But you're going to find that this shape is the cursed shape. It's the roof shape that they didn't make a piece for. But I have a feeling that's where these Grouston wall arches come in. Because these things usually clip right into the arches, as you can see there. And just by trimming it up and filling in some of those gaps with that wall arch, you can see that we make it look like it's a finished product. I mean, this looks like a cool building, you know? Doesn't look crazy to me. Honestly, I like this stuff more than the black marble. Unless you're using some of the smaller black marble peaches, Unless you're using some of the smaller black marble pieces, which I do actually like a lot. But these Groston pieces are so thin, they really add an element of building that just hasn't existed in Valheim so far. The next issue that you face has to do with supporting the Groston. As long as you're building up, you won't have to worry about anything. But as with many other stone pieces, as soon as you start building out, things are gonna start to break. All you have to do is make an iron beam framework for the stone to stand upon, and then you'll find that you can take the stone much, much further. As you can see, using iron beams is essential if you plan on building anything of reasonable size in Grouston. Therefore, when you're building with the Grouston, it might be a good idea to practice by using these modular units here. Make a four cubic meter frame of iron beams, that way you can always place the Grouston where you need, and then you can just remove the unnecessary framing later on. This wouldn't be necessary at all for something so small as you see now, but let's say I wanted to make something that travels out like that, well, the only way to do that is with a metal frame of some kind. They have loads of structural support. The frames allow us to fill up areas with Grouston and stone and make structures that normally you couldn't make with stone alone. And let's say you don't like how that looks. You don't like that exposed wooden beam. That's exactly where those handy dandy pillars from earlier come in. They really finish up the Grouston look, but it's also going to have all of the structural support of the wood iron beams, allowing you to build out like this. However, when one builds out like this, it creates a weird effect. A general building tip with Grouston is it needs to look heavy. There's a couple different ways that you can make something look more heavy. The easiest way to address it would be to add some kind of support column here that makes it look like that heaviness is resting upon something. And there, we've now added a pillar, and this helps make the base look heavier. And in general, just ask yourself that question. How can I make this heaviness of this material look more real? That's going to give your base a more authentic Feel. As for the top, you'll often find yourself in a situation where you have sort of a square blankness that you need to deal with. We'll start with this medium pillar here, and you want to place pillars in all four corners of the structure. Now all I have to do is snap the roof into it. When you're placing your roofs, you'll notice that there's two different pieces. There's the curved pieces on the left, and the straight piece on the right. Here we can snap the roof into these archways, which will give it the support it needs to stay up. And then we can just finish our roof up by filling it up with these stone floor pieces. In general, the Ashland's roofs will work better if you overextend them a little bit like this. This is the easiest sort of roof to work with. These roof pieces look a little bit naked until you add some trim. And that's where these medium arches come in. You'll often find that you're working with a roof piece and then you clip an arch in and then you're like, well, that arch, in order to be there and look right, it needs to go all the way back down to the ground. So you end up making a lot of these pillar-like things here. And if you don't fill them with wood iron beams, as I showed you earlier, then they're all just going to fall apart. That's why it's so much easier to build with the wood iron beams as well. If you're just going up like this, you don't necessarily need them. 
But to do any kind of horizontal action, as one might say, then you do need to build these wood iron beams and snap the groused in pieces on top of them so they're out of sight. In general, people prefer this Grouston roof because it clips into things better. So if you're not sure about what to do, I recommend you use the straight roof instead of the curved one. The problem that comes up with the curved roof that you see here is that it doesn't always clip into things as well, and it sort of looks unfinished, right? But as usual, all we have to do is clip in some horizontal pillars, and then suddenly everything looks all finished. So if anything looks weird in your Groston building, it's probably because you haven't snapped in enough small beams or medium beams. These things really give the Groston the finished look and they're quite important. Additionally, when you're making your roofs, you'll find that the Grouston doesn't support itself that well, especially in the roofing area. To be able to actually place a larger roof, you'll need to frame out some of the 45 degree iron beams like this, and then it's gonna be incredibly easy for you to place the Grouston. It's gonna behave as if it's wood, pretty much. It's all about those wood iron beams. Those things make building much easier. As you progress in the Ashlands, you'll get flame metal, and you'll be able to make some of the most Mordor-looking gates in the game. But people often trip out about how to actually place these things. So here is how you make the frame for the flame metal gates. First, make one medium pillar using four Grouston pieces. Next, select the flame metal gate and change the snap point. We're going to use the top edge here, and now place it on the very top of the pile. Make sure that you can see the lovely looking door handle. Now we can set the snapping back to auto and place the second part of the door frame. And all we have to do from this point is continue the arch using the medium arch piece here as shown. And then just keep building to the ground. This is how you make the frame for the flame metal gate that actually fits exactly in place. People get confused because they use these small arches here and then they try and place the gate, but it's not really the right size, as you can see. You have to use the medium arches, and then it works quite well. The small arches actually perfectly fit the Ashwood door. But that's Ashwood, which is a whole other video. And for now, you know the basics of building with Grouston, the new stone in the Ashlands. It's really quite a lot of fun. Don't let the pishy poshy online that says that it's really boring and horrible get to you, because I found quite a lot of joy building with this new material. And if you want to support my work, then consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server using my link JP Valheim at Zap Hosting. Running Running a dedicated server is a fantastic way to play Valheim because it really extends the lifetime of your experience. Solo Valheim can only be so interesting, but when you run a server, I mean, the world is your oyster. There's a whole world out there, and loads of different people who like different kinds of experiences in Valheim, and it's only a matter of time before you find some players who enjoy the kind of stuff that you engage in. So I encourage you to set up a server, especially if you have a group of people who want to have that experience. Whether you use my link or someone else's, really, it's an experience worth having, and I contribute it to one of the reasons that I've had so much fun with this game even though it's technically not even done. That's it for now, everybody. If you want YouTube to recommend you more Valheim videos, just like this video or any other video about Valheim, and YouTube will start dishing out the content. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.